A strong magnitude 4 earthquake struck Missouri today with a 2.5 aftershock exactly in the same location an hour later. And this is what the magma looks like in the area. And that thing there in the center, uh, the orange, red, orange, and yellow, and this is the red area right here. This is exactly where the earthquake took place today. Magnitude 4 and 2.5 an hour later. Now we know that the earthquakes that are east of the Rocky Mountains are felt about 10 times more than they are felt on the west coast because the area here is much softer. And we know that this is basically the area of the New Madrid seismic zone, or we should be calling that the New Madrid rift zone because basically that's a rift valley the eastern part of the united states is basically heading southeast and splitting from uh, around the, the uh, area of the mississippi river and the great lakes mount uh, lake erie lake ontario and up to st lawrence river and uh, so it won't take much to split that but uh, this is where the earthquake the earthquakes have taken place magnitude four let's take a look at the maps you could take an idea have an idea of what's going on finally support my patreon account the daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what i have on my youtube channel thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting you'll find the patreon account details in the description box here we are at seismo berkeley and it's basically uh, about 300 miles from uh, south of St. Louis, Missouri, and it's in this area called Williamsville. Okay, the four took place at 4.53 a.m. local time. This one was about 5.40 a.m. local time, two and a half an hour later, 2.5 magnitude. So basically it's an aftershock. And um, going into the map of this, this is the map. Uh, why am I, what am I showing? No, I'm showing the wrong thing. Sorry. I wanted to go into the frequency. Okay. This is it here. And um, population, not many living in that area exactly. And uh, going back to the aerial. I just want to see how many people reported this. Okay, about 5,000 people reported this. And um, we don't have a shake alert here as we do in California, even though it's a four magnitude. We had a 3.9 magnitude in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area, a swarm of earthquakes there. And um, if you see the video before this one also, Mount St. Helens had 25 earthquakes in the past 30 days. And uh, this one here is a surprise because it's in the middle of uh, the continental United States. Of course, it's an area that has a rift zone. Topographic right there. Now, in the past videos concerning the very interesting things we found in Kansas, um, let's look at this a little bit more. Okay, there we go. Uh, this area here has a mantle plume underneath it from a billion years ago when uh, basically we had a Pangea system going on. And that's a, that was a horse-shaped mantle plume. It's still under there today. The geologists don't know where it's coming from, but it's a mantle plume that goes like this, and the, left, uh, the western arm goes down through Kansas, Arkansas, Texas, and then goes west this way. And the eastern arm of the mantle plume goes down this way and up like that. It's like an omega. It's like a Greek capital omega. Uh, but this is the rift valley right here. This is the uh, Mississippi River this way, Lake Ontario, Lake Erie, and that's the St. Lawrence River. Basically, you can see uh, that cutting area, okay, the uh, New Madrid seismic zone. And now we found out that uh, Missouri, Kansas, that's the mantle plume going down there. Remember I told you, going through uh, Iowa, uh, Mississippi, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas. 
Well, there's volcanoes there, and Kansas has what's called kimberlite volcanoes, which are basically um, diamond-spewing volcanoes. And we found that out because we, uh, we had a lot of people that were saying that they hear booms underneath their houses, and their houses shake underneath the foundation. Well, the kimberlite volcanoes are explosive. There's a lot of volcanic gas that builds up and has to sort of exp expand and be released very suddenly. And that's probably, it could be what, what you're hearing uh, because there's a lot of diamond volcanoes there, diamond producing volcanoes there. So this is our area of the surprising um, four magnitude and 2.5 today. And um, uh, we do have a lot of earthquakes there. Look at the earthquakes in Canada. A lot of people say, why doesn't Canada have earthquakes? Well, it does. Look at this one. This was a, I think it was a five magnitude on the 21st. Look at this one here. This is an area of kimberlite volcanoes as well. The Northern Territories, it's, it was 5.2. Uh, we don't ba basically uh, have any interest in what's going on in Canada, but Look at this, the West Coast. And of course, this was the uh, five magnitude was huge. And I guess not many people live up there, Edmonton, Alberta. And look what's going on here around the St. Lawrence River. This one here was 3.1. And this one off the coast, 3.5. And this is an area where we have the um, the seamounts, the 30 seamounts off the coast. Let's see, do we have the aerial here? Let's go to the aerial. Right here. That's volcanoes right there as well, underwater volcanoes. These are the Azores, underwater volcanoes, four, four volcanoes in Maine alone, in a 100 mile radius. And uh, let's take a look at this now. Almost 5,000 people reported it. And what's going on there? Now, the large region borders the much more seismically active New Madrid seismic zone. The Illinois Basin, Ozark Dome region covers parts of Indiana, Kentucky, Illinois, Missouri, Arkansas, stretching from Indianapolis to St. Louis. Modern frequent, moderately frequent earthquakes occur at regular intervals. The largest historic earthquake in the region was magnitude 5.4, damaging southern Louis, Illinois in 1968. Moderately damaging earthquakes strike somewhere in the region each decade or two, and smaller earthquakes are felt about once or twice a year. In addition, geologists have found evidence of eight or more prehistoric earthquakes over the last 25,000 years that were much higher, larger than any observed historically, historically in the region. Earthquakes in the central and eastern US, although less frequent than in the western, are typically felt over a much broader region. East of the Rockies, an earthquake can be felt over an area as much as 10 times larger than a similar earthquake, magnitude earthquake on the west coast. So a magnitude four, this is what we had here, a magnitude four eastern Earth, US earthquake typically can be felt at many places as far as 60 miles from where it occurred, and it frequently causes damage near its source. A magnitude 5.5 eastern US earthquake usually can be felt as far as 300 miles from where it occurred, and sometimes causes damage as far away as 25 miles. So this one was 60 miles. Let's see where the 60 miles were. That's our key right there. And let's go to our topographic. So I guess it's about up to here. But of course the frequency shows that it shook the whole area and over just about 5,000 people reported feeling it. Okay. Fault lines, earthquakes everywhere occur on fault within bedrock, usually miles deep. Most bedrock in the Illinois Basin, the Ozark Dome region, was formed as several generations of mountains rose and were eroded down again over the last billion or so years. 
a well-studied plate boundary like San Andreas Fault System in California, often scientists can determine the name of the specific fault that's responsible for an earthquake. In contrast, east of the Rockies is a rare, uh, is rarely the case. The Illinois Basin Ozark Dome region, which was where we had the earthquake, is far from the nearest plate boundaries, which are in the center of the Atlantic Ocean, in the Caribbean, and the Gulf of California. The region is laced with known faults, but numerous smaller or deeper buried faults remain undetected. Even the known faults are poorly located at earthquake depths. Accordingly, few earthquakes in the region can be linked to, a, to named faults. It's difficult to determine if a known fault is still active and could slip and cause an earthquake. As in most other areas east of the Rockies, the best guide, guide to earthquake hazards in the Illinois Basin Ozark Dome region is the earthquakes themselves. This is according to USGS. Okay. Uh, going back to our map and topographic. Here we go. Uh, as we said before, there's magma under there, a big, huge magma uh, plume right under there, going like this, like a, like a Greek Omega, capital Omega, going like this. And of course, this is the New Madrid seismic zone. So all of you there, please be very careful and alert. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.